Welcome back everyone to another episode of Roofing Rundown Show. My name is Dmitry Lipinski, your host of this wonderful show at Roofing Insights. And today I have very, very special guest, Mr. Lee Haidt. Um, a lot of you already know who Mr. Lee is. He is a serial roofing entrepreneur. You can basically put a target on my back, but I'm here to help every contractor get more basically validity in their argument that everybody should not go to college. They should become a blue collar entrepreneur. You should learn how to sell, learn how to market. And what I've learned that really, really changed my life was I had to fucking become a marketer first. I had to become a marketer first. And uh, I'm about to jump on a call with him to talk about roofing business, sales, marketing, social media, and all of that good stuff that brings us sales. Thank you so much for coming. How you doing? Man, I'm living the life. This is what a scaled contractor who's living life on the beach with an eight-figure company looks like, man. <laughs> hey, look, look what I have here. Look behind me. Look, look, look. See? Oh, like, shit. <laughs> I, I was trying to explain to my videographers who is uh, Lee. And uh, so then I printed a whole bunch of your pictures, put it right behind me. And I said, does it look like I'm a, uh, I'm a stalker, I'm a fan, or I'm a detective who's looking for like serial killer? Uh, a little bit of all three, baby. We got to get to the bottom of the story, man. We got to find out. Pretty much. Looking, I told them I'm looking for a senior, a serial entrepreneur, a roofing entrepreneur, and you're definitely one of them. So that's how we're going to roll today. So tell me, wh where are you at right now? I'm in Naples, Florida. Naples, Florida. This what is you? my back porch, man. I just moved into my little dream neighborhood right down the street from the ocean. My uh, kids are at school today. My wife went there. They have beach day. All so, right. They go out on the beach the last week of school. So some something pretty cool, I guess. So you moved your family there? How long have you been in Florida? I've been in Florida ever since I sold Grant Cardona roof. But uh, I've been traveling here. Trying when to was that? 2016, something like that. So like a couple of years? A while. It took like a year and a half to do it. But that was my first commercial roof here in Florida. And I just kept saying, man, I want, I want my business to be here. All right. All right. Right on. What, uh, where were you before? I am from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Okay, yeah, because I've seen tons of videos from you from Dallas, uh, I guess like years back. So do you still go back to Dallas? Yeah, so I was born and bred on the streets of the hardcore door-to-door -door hail damage market at Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, I knocked my first door at 13. Like my dad and uncle, I was, you know, kind of blessed to kind of grow up in the industry. I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to be a door-to-door -door roofer. And mm -hmm. um, that being said, I've been the guy that's, you the 17th guy to my door. Don't you know? Y'all are like ambulance chasers. Do you see the sign? No more roofers knocking on my door. So I've been, I've been, uh, let's just say, uh, privy to uh, antiquated old school uh, consequences of a market getting overrun. So what kind of personality does it take? Because I don't think I can do it. I mean, you know, a lot of people cannot do it. How many doors you have shut in your face and how many people, I mean, you, you must have like the thickest skin out there, like to overcome all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I would say I've knocked 50,000 doors and I guess what you do is you condition your mind to love it based on the fact that you know that the each no that you go through is good karma that you build up for good quality guesses. And so um, the idea is, is that I am most passionate about opening the door to opportunity with people, whether it be the storm damage opportunity as an entrepreneur, or whether it be the solving of the property owners. You know, most of the time we talk to people, they don't even know about the damage. They don't know how much, you know, really, you know, a lot of times I've seen you talk about how a lot of times you'll talk about repairs first in your advertisement and then you'll get out there, you'll notice damage and it'll obviously turn to a replacement. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like to open the door. So I don't mind the people that tell me no, because basically I know that I'm doing them a favor. I call myself the storm damage evangelist because, you know, it feels like, you know, you're a Jehovah's witness as many times as you do it. And uh, when you explain this opportunity to people, they're like, ah, I don't want to go be a roofer. I don't want to knock on doors. I mean, I see you advertising for salespeople. I mean, we've been conditioned as a society actually to vilify the trades. 
you know, we are not given uh, the respect as a blue collar entrepreneur uh, group of men that I think that we deserve. And so that's my purpose in life is to uh, as a bring light to the blue collar entrepreneur dream, bring light to the storm damage restoration market, introduce this opportunity to more people than anybody has before and, and hopefully facilitate people's success better than, uh, you know, with my contributions. Wow. Well, it definitely takes a special personality. You have it. But uh, I found it very hard to teach others to follow you. Obviously, you have success because you are you. You, you have your personality. How do you scale it? How do you recruit other people to follow your steps? Well, it's all about the things that you have done really well, and that is personal branding, and it's just applying that to your end user. And see, I've always been focused as a young man. Imagine graduating from high school and thinking about getting your high school friends into the roofing business. That was me. So I've been practicing since I was that age. And so whenever I think about who am I most passionate about talking to, a lot of times I'm talking to that end user when most roofers are thinking about talking to the property owner. And so that being said, I become an expert in my space. I try to capture the attention across all social media platforms. I know the future is in my funnel. And the first thing that I did was you know really really realized that after i recruited all my friends and then family and they started their own business and it's tough when you know i even saw that you had one of these guys that might have been part of your community and it just didn't end well and every time this would happen it would just take the wind out of my sails it made me want to quit my business and i'd end up back doing the same shit i was doing a few years back and i'd have to start over so used to be you could advertise on social uh, on craigslist you could advertise on job boards, but with more and more people basically auto posting, auto applying and people not wanting to go on a commission job in an overload or overcrowded market, it got harder to get people on job boards. Do you agree? Is that hard to do? Yes. It, it, well, it's getting saturated. I would say it's the same thing as happened to Google. Like when, like Gary Vee said, you know, he's one of the big, big mistakes he made in his business years ago. He didn't invest enough in Google pay per click when it was hot, right? So as far as marketing goes, you have to recognize brand new platform and uh, jump on it while it's hot. What that was for me that changed my life and can change anybody's life. Just what? one, you know what it is. What? Ability to go live, to speak your voice, to force yourself to find what's inside of you, to tell your story brand, to clarify yeah. your message, to see it immediately how you could captivate and get people's attention. There's nobody in our industry that captivates people's attention solely based on their message, their transparency, what they're sharing in a live format the way I do. And how so often do you go live? Just about every other day. I mean, I, the problem I have is implementing some of the consistencies. You do really things with discipline and using YouTube, and there's so many different things that you do well that, that would complement what I do. You know, I'm a little bit more of an improvisational master. And um, that being said, I got reached out to by the Discovery Channel. I'm in the process of, of, of actually being put on network TV. Nice. And so um, it's not final, but these people are coming to me based on, you know, how they found me an article and then a YouTube video, and then of course the, the social media. And the idea is, is that whenever you're recruiting a millennial, you see you have to have this content so that when they go to check you out, they stick. You have to have a personality that sticks. You have to have an opportunity that sticks. You have to have a message that sticks. You have to have a story that sticks. And when it sticks, like I walked into the greatest salesman of all time, a mentor reading his books. I said, this man owns apartments. I'm going to walk into his office and I'm going to close him. And not only am I going to close him, I'm going to write a check and I'm going to videotape it. And then I'm going to share it with the industry and I'm going to use him as an influencer marketer. I'm going to use him to recruit salespeople. I'm going to use it as a mission to give validity to what we do as storm damage entrepreneurs to car salespeople, insurance people, real estate people. Now people know about the opportunity because of me. And so that being said, you can basically put a target on my back, but I'm here to help every contractor get more basically validity in their argument that everybody should not go to college. They should become a blue collar entrepreneur. You should learn how to sell, learn how to market. And what I've learned that really, really changed my life was I had to fucking become a marketer first. I had to become a marketer first. And I was such a good salesman, such a good door to door person, such a good person at recruiting that it was only through recycling the same rat race, wasting time and burning my engines. Did it finally get to say, look, 
it was one year. And I'll tell you my story where I hit the wall, like where it was like, basically, I did $13 million in sales. And anyone that does 13 millions, eight figures, that's a good goal. And that, that's awesome. But I chased storms all over the country in five different markets. Some of the storms, we only did $3 million in revenue. We had accounts receivables everywhere. We had a big executive team, a lot of overhead. We did do commercial deals, a small percentage. But essentially, what happened was is I did $13 million. I depended heavily on an executive. I let the man too close to my organization. He left. He stole money. He stole people. He stole profits. And he took the wind out of my cells, especially when my own family decided, uh, you know, that it was better off to go work with this guy. So I, I had to regroup. And at that same time, my uncle, and if you don't know, like my dad and my uncle started in business together, but there was a time where my uncle and my dad split up and my uncle got really successful, 80 million a year. So the bar is set really high for me. My uncle did 80 million a year in this business for a consistent long time. He invented the 10, 50, 50 pay plan. He made the corporate structure and organization. His keys was getting people. His keys was getting leaders. His his keys was having leaders, groom leaders, groom leaders, network marketing. And so that being said, the game changed. You you couldn't do it without without social media. You couldn't do it without really accelerating your message. And my uncle actually he passed away. So I lost a mentor. I had to replace him. I sort of replaced it with Grant Cardone. And then of course, after you take one mentor, you realize you can't take everything from one mentor. You have to take from from all the mentors. And I you know I don't know how much people have invested in coaching and contracting, but most people not very much. And I invested six figures between Grant Cardone. I then hired his digital marketer who was doing his Infusionsoft campaigns. And then I hired his social media coach. Then I hired his copyright guy. Then I was hiring, you know, basically people like Russell Brunson and Frank Kern. And I was hiring entrepreneurs like they were like, instead of buying cars, I was hiring coaches. And so maybe people should think about that. Maybe you should think about the tax money that you're wasting, the money you're wasting at the bars. If you want to be a superstar at the VIP club with the strippers and, you know, that's one, uh, there's entrepreneur coaches out there that'll take you to those superstar levels, but I'm not that guy. I had a family in the roofing business for the last seven years. I've chased storms. My life's not perfect, but I've found a way to actually live and have a healthy existence in this crazy rat race. And I've evolved through creating a personal brand, learning how to use social media, learning how to market, building funnels that actually convert. Now, what do I do? I use a hybrid approach between door to door and marketing. It's not one or the other. You can't have one without the other. And so whenever you talk about scaling in a new age contract, I say, beware of who you're taking advice from. If you're taking advice from someone without a successful contracting company like me and Dimitri, I would be aware. So tell me, I want to hear more about marketing strategies that allow you to do this roofing insights and what's going on with storm group up there. I know y'all are kicking ass. I was in Minnesota. I saw you up there. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I've never door knocked in my life. I hate door knocking. It's just not my personality. Even, and it, it goes across all businesses. I actually have a team of mentors who tells me, Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. And I, I never argue it's bad. I said, like me, I have to learn what you do. I have to learn canvassing. And the biggest companies in the country now, they master canvassing and marketing, like branding. So my thing is, wh whatever I do, if I do business consulting, like right now, you know, people call me, say, Hey, can you set up my marketing? company. I was like, sure I do, but I don't like to advertise for it. I, I like to build a reputation. I just love when people call me and say, Dimitri, can you help? And I have leverage that way. I build, it's just, you know, I follow guys like Gary V. I, I'm a big value guy. Like I have to over de deliver the value in the first place where I don't have to prove to anybody that I worth something, whether it's roofing, whether it's marketing, whether it's whatever. I build my brand, the same thing which you do in a personal branding. And I have a people in line now and you know for the last two years I have when people ask me hey can we pay you ten thousand dollars to market my business I'm like no I don't want your money what I can do I can come to you for a day or two give me two thousand dollars I teach few people in your organization and you'll be better off I'll be better off I don't want to sell leads I don't want to like I want to be very different uh, marketing agency because there's so many scammers there's so many people who I mean I can go right now make one Facebook you know live video or one post and say I want to build websites 
And just like Gary Vee said, when Gary Vee started his business, he said, we understood that we could, we lose $25 million a year by not building websites. But he's like, I'm not a tech guy. The same here, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not your SEO expert, I'm a branding expert. And I know how to generate, you know, five, seven million Per, in, in the busiest sure. markets out there just by generating phone calls. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that works. It's not one or two or three. You have to find what works best. But I mean, back in the day, it was like Angel's List. It was, uh, I mean, there's so many things like, I mean, Craigslist, wh whatever it is, you have to find out what works. For roofing ads is different than Craigslist for recruiting because they True. put a $5 cost on it and yep. then it actually became a valid place to advertise True. for deals, correct? Yes. Free and it used to suck. Yeah, well, but but now Craigslist changed too. Right now, Craigslist, you have to pay even for roofing ads. That's what I'm saying. When you pay for roofing ad, it disqualifies all the chumps, and then you can actually, you know, exactly. So it's it's great. I mean, all of the like the thing is, there's so many things that work, and a lot of them are free. You just have to find out. And my thing is like, you have to build the leverage. Like for example, even reviews. Think about reviews. How many customers you have? How many customers I have? I. I mean, my company has 1,000 reviews, right, Storm Group. So when you have 1,000 reviews, I mean, you will get business, <laughs> you know, but now if... That's really impressive. I I'm going to ask you about this technique. We've been using it. I got it from a guy by the name of Matt Allen in Alabama. He is basically getting friends and family to accept Google locations so that basically he can pull up on the map all around the city so that it comes up on the top of the map. And he's getting leads for free by getting multiple verifications of his address. I see, I see what you mean. Uh, well, you have to be careful because uh, Google might punish you for that. I have, so I have two offices. So Roofing Insights doesn't need the address. So Roofing Insights actually hosts Storm Group Roofing because Roofing Insights is uh, in downtown and uh, Storm Group is in uh, Brooklyn Park. We have technically two addresses, but when I moved to Minneapolis and I, the reason I took um, this office because of uh, geolocation, because I wanted to be in downtown, uh, I literally went to number one on Google in two searches within 30 days just by switching and tagging just one. I have biggest competitor in town, $50 million company. And in one zip code, Roofing Minneapolis, we were number one right away. The biggest competitor, Seller? Uh, Seller Roofing was the one, yep. So we, 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 bu yeah, we bypassed them uh, just by switching. It's little things, but it's, they work. <laughs> no, that's a fact that it does work. And so what I, what I really you know, am worried about is I'm worried about the fact that contractors are naive to think that the antiquated business practices are going to continue to work. And if you look at this year as an example, if we had a good year for hell last year, but a bad year for hell this year, there's going to be people going straight belly up right now because they don't know how to market, because they're not serious about targeted campaigns. See, I do direct mail and I do, and I do door knocking and I do Facebook and we do Google SEO and we do AdWords. We do the full game. You have to do all. And the truth is, is that I have to go to a new business. So, because I, in over the last, let's see, 13 years, 40 different markets, I've started storms, going to start the neighborhood, start the push, rebrand, repush, restart. And that makes me a startup growth hack expert. And I can tell you, you know, there's certain things. Uh, we, we generated 201 leads off of Google and Facebook that we do. And I'll tell you real quick what we do. We use engaging video. This is the key to your future. You know, contractors need to understand that it's not just getting the information. Sometimes you need to force yourself to level up by who you surround yourself with. And so, you know, I started to create really, really impactful video with an end purpose in mind. And then that, you know, kind of began. That was a part of the beginning transitions four years ago where I went from $13 million company to $50 million company. And this year we've already built $26 million in projects and God bless my team. And I'm grateful to be able to have wow. this opportunity in Florida and it's 13 years becoming an overnight, like where I feel like, you know, I'm getting to a point where this is what I'm proud of at the end of the year. You know, I'm not going to be done with this at all because I'm now, you know, the first roofing contractor to do a webinar for property owners in Florida to teach people the hidden cost of hurricanes, how to avoid unnecessary out-of-pocket expense due to storms, how to protect their financial prosperity, their property value, and not overpay for insurance in a state where storms are coming. I'm doing a documentary. We're going to go on a large, massive scale directed to the property owners 
So I'm using the same techniques that the, the advertising to contractors, that advertising on social media, that doing webinars to sell. You know, I'm passionate about helping contractors and I'm passionate about building a successful in, in, uh, internet business. And so, you know, my dad, he created Claim Express. It's a software like AccuLinks, like Job Nimbus, but we had it available a long time ago. And we didn't sell the software enough because we didn't have internet marketing prowess. We didn't have the ability to sell online. And it wasn't until I invested in coaching into mentors and into joining, like leveling up my inner circle that's when I started to make big gains. And then you didn't see it immediately. It was hard work. And I have, you know, I know that this hasn't happened overnight. Your brand, Roofing Insight, you can't expect to do this overnight. What you have to realize is if you don't start now, where are you going to be in three to five years? Are you going to be there completely on the outside of this crevice? And you see the gap between the strong contractors, the sellers, the guys like, you know, that, that are dominating the market, and then the people that can barely stay in business. And there's more and more people that can barely stay in business and less, you know, and there's more separation between the champions of the marketplace. And so there's, I believe, people out there giving advice that are not champions of the marketplace that people have to be aware of, that you should look for an example. And more than just basically what their opinion is and what their example is. And I love the example that Dimitri says. He has a five to seven million business that runs without him. He gets to stay at home. See, that's what I'm most disappointed in myself i didn't create in dallas because it got very very competitive to the point where dominating on seo in dallas is like fucking tough and so you're doing it right now taking take, taking on dallas as opposed to going to a place like florida where i can pay ten dollars a you know how much the clicks are here it's ten dollars a click you know what we're doing is we're using basically smart google pay-per-click advertising with a good partner and i do pay a retainer but i spend enough money that I get my leads for about 75 bucks a lead. And, you know, I mean, the That's fact good. is that I, I spend about 10 grand a month on AdWords and it's leads on demand. And then I use social media with engagement videos. I say the biggest thing with social media is to get targeted around the area, the city, make the content, match the video, and then also tell them about how you clean up projects, tell them about how you identify damage, tell them about how you do estimates, tell them about your certainty master shingle applicator roof system, tell them about all these content-based things, retarget the people that watch your videos. You can do a lead form, you can do a click funnels page. How you collect the lead is not as important as you think. But whenever you do have people on the fence and you have testimonials on your landing page, mm -hmm. now you're actually converting online. You're getting these people to share these same links in the next door app. You're getting them to share organically in the neighborhood Facebook group. And now you're digitally scaling yourself. You're knocking doors in the neighborhood. Your salespeople are more fired up. Hell, salespeople from other companies want to switch. They want to come work for you. Guys like Crest Hustle. You know, how, how do you think they're starting to grow so much? Well, salespeople see this brand, they see this movement, mm -hmm. they see this Absolutely. network, the ads. So if your your company is a beast in the marketplace and you're not doing that, well, we are. And the fact is, if you don't start, it's like, please join us so we can be obsessed with progression together. Because the consequence of that is your your people are watching me, your people are exactly. seeing what's happening, and you need to join or 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 become a casualty of the storm. I tell people all the time, you're hundred percent right. I tell people all the time. Uh, that I consult that you don't build brand just for potential clients. You build brand for your own employees. Because would you rather work for a company who has a stellar reputation, who has 1,000 reviews, or work for a company who has 10 reviews? What's the leverage bet between Storm Group and the guy next door? Well, you come to us, like I ask my employees all the time, after interview, why did you decide to choose the position? And they would say, like, we went online and we like what we see. Because when they see the owner taking care of the jobs, taking care of the homeowners, you know, like, like I tell people, it, it, they love it. I, I tell people all the time, I love dealing with mess. If you look at my uh, Facebook job description, I'm a janitor at Storm Group because I don't, I don't mind to go and deal with a homeowner who gave me one star review on Facebook because I know after one hour with him, he's gonna give me a hug and he's gonna change it to five star. Most business owners, they hate it. They're like, I don't wanna touch it, he's negative homeowner, blah, blah, I cannot please him. I'm like, no, that's your job to please your homeowner. You charging him money and you know, you're talking about 20 grand and you don't wanna meet with him because he has complaints? What's wrong with you? And all I deal with the negative stuff, and I give, I give my um, team credit for all the good stuff, all the sales, everything, but negative, it's on me. 
uh, you know, I fail them, you go in and deal with it, but then your team will see it and uh, they, they will follow it. I have one last question for you because we're getting like a little bit long here, but last question is, so you and me, we're all like public. We all go in and all in video. One thing that comes with it, it comes with the haters. How do you deal with haters? With like uh, right now, I have like the cool, like even fittest roofer, right? So when I when I come up with the fittest roofer last year, which is like the best idea ever, I put my own money. I say I'm gonna ever, bro. And your arm wrestling deal. That's how you know you're a genius. Yep. So, listen. So w when I when I did it originally, I said I'm gonna pay my own money to top winner, whatever. Last year, and I have freaking haters commenting like. The reason you're doing it because it's a tax write-off for you. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? The point is, no matter what you do, no matter how good your intentions are, people still gonna hate, they're gonna comment. How do you deal with that? My last name is Hate. They called me the hater in high school. I was bred to make hate, okay? I'm not kidding. And I make an impact, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. It's a polarizing individual. Red ocean, blue ocean. I'm going to take you to the to the place that no one else is, and you're going to hate me for it, or you're going to love me for it. And I don't care. And it does really, really deeply, like Gary V, strike me to want to basically make light to the people that hate me. Because the only reason why they don't hate me is because they don't know me. And what I find out is that you know through the trials that I've took, your style with Gary V, my style was a little bit more Grant Cardone. My style was a little bit more, I'm gonna charge for pro promotions, I'm gonna do this, I'm, it's gonna be coaching and your style is a little bit like brand and then you know deliver value. And so, you know, in the beginning I was a rookie coach, I scaled so big, like you're talking about, you're gonna have to raise your prices because you can't go that cheap all over the country. That's what happened to me. I sold like 150 co clients and I just outscaled myself to some extent while I was running a roofing company. And you know, the truth is, is that, you know, people hate the fact that I'm able to tell my story. They hate that I'm able to be vulnerable enough the company like when I talk about you know even within my family and stuff that that, that that I've kind of you know started to go above that used to be the 80 million dollar year company they they took an opposite approach to social media and they and it's hurt them as a matter of fact their people continue to come over and I can't help it it's like you know I'm not trying to do anything but it's just the message is so powerful and the results are so powerful and the people are so really into the mission that it's more than the money and the idea is is that you know, you need more haters. If people aren't polarized and coming after you, you go out and sell 10 jobs in the neighborhood, they're going to be talking shit about you. You go out there and make noise on social media, there's going to be people looking for chinks in your armor. But that's why you have to basically be that real person who checks yourself and says, what is my purpose? And my purpose is, is actually helping contractors win, being the best facilitator of success. I, I have a $20,000 bill. I have to pay, and this is different than what you do, but you invested in the office. I went to Brad Lee, Lightspeed VT. He charges $10,000 per finished hour, and so basically three hours of content costs $30,000. And that's what I put into helping other contractors when helping my competition level up. And so what, what I want to do, of course, is train their salespeople, teach them how to scale and recruit in a new marketplace, give them some proven systems for scalability, be an example of not just a, a making money guy, but, but what it means to have good relationships, to have a family as a contractor, to do a little bit more with your money, like invest in real estate and things. And, you know, we're doing a inner circle a group of people that, that are, if they're serious about making a transition, sometimes the information alone is not enough. They need, you know, the coaching like you give people when you go and help them with the marketing. And, you know, the thing is, is that I want you to be a part of that process. We're going to do four live events and it's not going to be a live event. It's all about partying. It's all going to be a price point where, you know, essentially everyone's going to be there on a decade in a day, build their brand, build their story that tells you know, launch their funnels, tell, tell, tell a basically sales process to commercial. I mean, that's the big thing I do. We've got guys that are making $400,000 commissions off of one roof down here in South Florida. Seriously, Glenn McGurgan, he, he's got a potential to do a $10 million roofing book of business. Wow. And that's never been done for uh, not, results like that are not normal, but in 13 years that I can facilitate that guy's success. And this is not like general contracting projects. These are only roofing projects. They're tile roofs, discontinued wow. tile for miles. We're getting uh, $1,500 debt to, to $2,000 a square. And so it adds up fast. It's cheating, but it's what I call increasing your average transaction value. So, so we got $26 million built. That was only 458 projects.
Wow. I used to do thousands of projects for 13 million. And so the idea is to get ahead of the marketplace. You want to go for the biggest deals. You need to know how to market. You need to know how to recruit. You need to, you know, of course, manage your book of business online. But you also need to level up because contractors, we're always around people that are not on the owner's level. You as the owner have to be a way high level. Now, you probably deep down inside might have become a consultant because you wanted to spend more time with leaders in the marketplace. You want to pick their brain. You want to learn from them. Mm -hmm. You want them to inspire you because I found as a leader, once I, once I inspire others and set to be an example, I've always got to be the next level of a better example. I've always got to continue to improve. And then when I'm interviewing people, I can't help. The only way I learn is from other people and from taking parts that people specialize in and put them into my life. And so um, the idea is, is that we're going to do a, a group, a seven-figure inner circle, a seven-figure contractor inner circle. It's not going to be for everybody, but um, we want you to be there to talk to me. To, I'm, I'm a member of the DIY Ad Freaks. Um, I'm a premium member. I bought the premium service. I think it's a great service. I'm probably going to have Dimitri come see my office sometime because it's, he's incredibly over-delivering and undervalued in the marketplace with what he's delivering out there. Thank you, and I appreciate so it. Trust me, I've been watching all the players for a long time, and I wanna, the same thing, I wanna change how people market themselves, I wanna change who we depend on. I don't want anybody depend on, your, depend on your home advisors or Yelps and stuff like that. I mean, if people understand Facebook, Google, and basics, you know, like what does work and basic branding will be a killer, man. Thank you so much for your time. It was uh, it was uh, awesome. Yeah, it was awesome, buddy. I appreciate it. I'll see you when I get uh, closer to Florida. I travel everywhere too. Do you still plan to uh, to be in other locations, in other markets, or are you gonna settle in Florida now? I'm settling, man. And so basically, I'm gonna be like. Recently, we did an interview with the, one of my clients in Lubbock, and he got like salespeople that came in just off of my Facebook Live. So that's the kind of hope is that I can just roof in Florida and help people get set up all across the country as hail hits and just kind of help virtually and maybe come and see me and do those type of things. All right, well, good luck to you, sir. Thanks for your time. All right, we'll, we'll see you, man. See you, man. See you, man. Well, here you have it. If you want to learn how to do uh, door to door, uh, Lee Hyde is one of the people who teaches that. You can uh, reach him out in the uh, links below. Not endorsing Lee Hyde, I'm not his client. Uh, I just know Lee, he is a very passionate about door to door sales. And uh, I think his program probably worth to somebody who wants to go door to door, who wants to master it and who wants to, to become successful. But um, I said what I said in the interview with him that in 2018, you have to do both. You have to be aggressive on a door to door, on a personal, maybe cold call, cold email, uh, you know, direct messaging, maybe reaching out to people already in your circles. What I see a lot of times happening is business owners, they simply, simply uh, uh, being on a defense versus an offense. They, they want people to come to them. And as a result, even their friends sometimes don't know what is it they're doing. So if you're in business, you want to be proactively looking for clients. You probably already have somebody in your circles who is ready to hire you. You just don't know about it or about them and you're not actively looking for them. You have to knock on doors if you want to be successful. Thank you so much for coming for another episode of Roofing Rundown and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Roofing Rundown. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in comments below and don't forget to subscribe.